Hey kids, what up with it? Today we are going to be discussing the Arab and Israeli conflict. So if you take a look at this picture, I really like it because it's showing you that this is the state of Israel right here, the country of Israel. Okay, This guy over here, he is Jewish, you can tell by the yarmulke. This guy over here, he is Arab or Muslim, and you can tell by his headdress here. And they are fighting over the land in Israel. So this picture kind of sums up what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so the first thing we need to ask is, where is Israel? And I've done this before with you, but we're going to take a little Google Earth traveling here. And we're going to leave DCMS. And we're going to go across the ocean, and we are going to land in Jerusalem, okay, in Israel, which Jerusalem is in the Middle East, and Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, and that's taking you to Egypt, but we don't want to go to Egypt quite yet, okay? So here is Israel. It's this one right here. Now, Israel is located in the Middle East. You can also call the Middle East Southwest Asia. I would hope by now you knew that. It borders the Mediterranean Sea, and it is surrounded by three countries, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. Or actually, like I've said in class before, we say Lebanon when we're talking about the Middle East. We say Lebanon when we're talking about the city in Indiana. That's Lebanon. All right, so what three religions come from Southwest Asia, come from the Middle East? I'd hope, again, that you would be able to... Uh, say this without even looking. It's Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And I really like this sign down here because if you take a look at it, the C in coexist is for Islam. That's the half moon shape, the crescent. And then this star of David is for Judaism, and that's kind of like the X. And then the T is for Christianity, and that's like the cross in Christianity. All right. So most people today in Southwest Asia or the Middle East are Muslim. In fact, about 90% of the people in the area known as the Middle East are Muslim. Um, and they are typically known as Arabs. Now, that's not always true, but for the sake of our class in the seventh grade, we're going to say that most people that are from the Middle East and that are Muslim are Arabs. And that they are called Arabs because they are from the Arabian Peninsula. And here's an image of the Arabian Peninsula. Here's a closer one. That's where Saudi Arabia is. Typically, Arabs kind of look like this. They are, um, they have the religious headdress. They typically, men wear white, women wear black. Uh, but not again, not all Arabs are Muslims. Not all Muslims are Arabs. And not all people from the Middle East are Arabs. So... You know, we're making generalizations, but that's okay. So, digging into a little bit of history before we really get into the conflict between the Arabs and the Israelis, the Jewish people left Southwest Asia in the 700s when Islam became the dominant religion during the rule of the Ottomans. So here you see in this picture where the Ottomans ruled over, okay? And the Ottomans really, really spread Islam throughout the region. And so that made a lot of Jewish people that were living in what they called at the time Canaan, that made them kind of spread out into Europe. So the Ottoman Empire soon ruled over most of North Africa and the Middle East because of their great military, spreading out the Jewish people all over uh, Europe. So here you see one of the great Ottomans, Suleiman the Lawgiver, and you see here a map about uh, the Ottomans. And you can kind of pause it and analyze this if you'd like to. All right. So the Ottoman Empire from the 1300s to the 1600s was the most powerful empire in the Middle East and in North Africa. And they spread Islam all over North Africa, especially in the Middle East. North Africa here, uh, this is the Sahara Desert, but down into what we see as Africa now and into Central Europe. And that's where uh, Islam has spread to a lot today. 
So the Ottoman Empire really began to decline after World War II. The Allied Power, or I'm sorry, World War I, after the Allied Powers came in and really defeated the Ottomans and kind of broke up all of the Middle East amongst the different um, countries in Europe and the Allied Powers. So even though the Ottomans had left the Middle East, the religion of Islam stayed in the Middle East. After World War I, the British were the ones in the, of the Allied Powers who took control of parts of the Middle East. So the British for a long time had been hearing from Jewish people and also from Muslim people that the area of Israel and the area of Jerusalem belonged to them. It was both really, really important to both religions. Really important to both religions. So what they decided to do was they were going to promise different areas to the different religions, but they were going to keep them separated because they knew how important it was. So Palestine, and I know as soon as you hear the name Palestine, you're like, like New Palestine? Yeah, that might have something to do with it maybe, but it's not the same thing, obviously. Palestine in this area is referring to Israel, okay? And what the Palestine mandate was, was the area that the British took control of in um in the Middle East, and that included what today is Israel right here, and this area over here was promised to Muslims and Jews. So the British told the Jews in the Balfour Declaration that Palestine would eventually be a place where Jews could come back to um, and they could declare it as their home. Now, the Muslims did not like this because they were living there too. And the Muslims said, no, this is our land. We kicked the Jews out of here a long, long time ago. We should not have them move back. And so that's kind of where the whole thing started in around 1920. So this is what it was going to look like originally. You had Palestine, which was going to be promised to the Jews in the Balfour Declaration, and then this whole area was going to be for the Muslims. Now, the Muslims hated this idea, but it really didn't heat up until World War II. So from 1945 until 1949, during World War II, the Holocaust occurred. And when the Holocaust occurred, Jews literally had no place to go. They had nowhere to leave in Europe. And so the only place they had to go was where the British had promised them they could go, and that was Israel. This guy right here, Theodore Herzl, is the one who started the movement for Jews to move back to Israel, and that was called the Zionist movement. The Zionist movement. So, after the war, many Holocaust survivors migrated to Palestine, again, not New Palestine, which they consider to be their homeland. This movement was called the Zionist movement. So in 1947, after World War II, the United Nations partitioned or divided Palestine into separate Jewish and Muslims areas. This created a new state of Palestine, different than the one that had existed since 1920, and it also created the country of Jordan. So here you see, after World War I, what it looked like. Okay, This was the mandate, was that this whole area right here was going to be given to the Jews, and this whole area was going to be for the Muslims. Now, after the Palestinian, after 1947, this is what it looked like. Jews got all this land right here, and they got the best areas along here, which meant that the holiest of areas, including Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. So, Arabs, again, who are typically Muslims, make up about 90% of the population in Palestine. They didn't like the formation of a new country of Israel. Why would they not like this? Because they both, both the Jews and the Muslims, believed that areas like Jerusalem were holy land promised to them by God. 
1948, the Jews living in Palestine declared themselves not only an independent state, but an independent nation. And then the United Nations said, you know what, we like it, you can become an independent country separate from all of Palestine. And that's when things really, really got bad. The day after this, the Arab nations of Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria invaded Israel. This war was called the First Arab-Israeli War. Now, Israel had the backing of all of the United Nations because they, they were the ones who originally said, hey, you can go ahead and become a country. So not only did they have their backing, but they had their troops. And so the state of Israel is born, and then the Is Israel quick drove the Arabs out of their territories, and these people were forced to live in other countries as refugees. Hashtag vocab word. Other Jews living in surrounding Arab nations fled to Israel. So now they're saying, well, things are getting really bad. I was always a Jew, and I was always living in this area, but now I have to move to Israel because... Um, the Arabs hate us now living in this area. So take a look at this. This is what was originally proposed in 1947. And then after Israel, which was the territory allotted to the Jewish population, this green area said that they were going to become a separate nation. These uh, countries attacked them. They were backed by the United Nation. And now look at what happened. So the Arabs now are really upset because not only did the Jews get their own country, but they won back a lot of land with the help of countries that didn't even exist. Okay. So in a series of wars with its Arab neighbors, including the Six Day War in 1967, Israel has won portions of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. Mainly non-Israeli Arabs, that means Muslims, live in these areas. They are called the occupied territories. So basically what this is saying is that over the period of the next, say, 20 years or so, the Arabs and the Jews continued to fight and continued to have wars with one another. And the Israelis, mm -hmm. the Jews, continued to win these wars. Why? Because they have the backing of countries like the United Nation or the United States. And now the Muslims really don't like the Jews because they feel like now not only are they living in um, our area, not only are they living in our area, but they rule over us in parts of Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. Okay, so take a look at Israel. Here's the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip you might have heard on the news because it's occupied by Israel after certain wars, and this is where a lot of Muslims live. This area right here, the West Bank, okay, was promised to uh, the, the Muslims originally, but after a series of wars, has been given to the Jews. So take a look at Palestine over the years. Here it is before 1948. Okay, It was all Muslims. Here was the 1947 plan to divide it up. They get even less. Here it is the next 20 years. Now look at it in 2011. The Jews rule over all this area. So who are the different sides in this war? There are Palestinian Muslim leaders. Yasser Arafat was the leader of the PLO, and we'll define that in a minute from 1967 until his death in 2004. He works to free the occupied territories, the areas that are won in the war of, uh, in the war between the Israelis and the Arabs. He's been replaced by this man, Mahmoud Abbas. I know some of these names are a little strange for us. So the PLO is the Palestinian Liberation Organization. And that was an organization founded in 1964 with the purpose of liberating Palestine. Liberating means freeing. So they wanted to free Palestine from the Jews. So who leads Israel now? 
Benjamin Netanyahu is an Israeli politician and the current prime minister of Israel. So the nation of Israel has a prime minister and his name is Benjamin Netanyahu. So that kind of wraps it up. I know that's a lot to take in with the Arab-Israeli conflict. And we'll be talking more about it tomorrow. I hope you got a lot out of this lecture. And be ready for a quiz using your notes tomorrow.